Aries, hello, Amanda here. Welcome to Unseen Hands Healing. This is going to be your July shift reading. So we're looking at the shape you are shifting out of in the month of July, the shape you shift into, and what that shape shift looks and feels like. Aries, before we get into your cards, we're using the golden tarot today. The image that came to me as I was sitting with your energy is, um, I felt you, it, it was a very contemplative energy. I felt you drinking tea. And there was sort of a prophetic energy around it, like um, a reading tea leaves type energy. Um, it was this, but it was again, like you were incredibly centered, incredibly calm. Um, basking in the steam rising up from the teapot. So I think this is interesting Aries because I would typically associate Aries energy with the moment that the tea kettle whistles because it has reached boiling point, you know, that Aries fiery, steamy kind of heat energy, but this was actually more of the after effects of that, more of like, okay, the, the kettle has already whistled and now this is the part where the tea kettle is just sort of gently, steam is gently rising from the tea water. It has already boiled and now it's time to sit in contemplation and allow the herbs to work through your body as you digest the liquid, but also like allowing the medicine in the herbal steam seemed important to like rise up into your face and allow you to like breathe in that herbal steam. And then, but again, there was, there was sort of a prophetic bent to the whole thing. Um, like in that moment of contemplative serenity where you are clearly drinking something medicinal, there's insight to be gained there. I like the energy, Aries, it's nice. Okay, let's get into your cards. So we're first asking what is the shape that Aries is shifting out of in the month of July? July, July. We've got our final eclipse, you know, moving out of June, eclipse season. We begin July with a full moon eclipse, lunar eclipse in Capricorn, the day Mercury goes direct. It's an exciting way to start off July. So let's see, what is the shape Aries is shifting out of in the month of July? Mm-hmm, okay. Shifting out of this Queen of Cups energy. Quill in hand. Quill and book. Posed at the ready. <laughs> it's interesting that, that there's this cup of water right here and a little scorpion crawling out that Scorpio energy. That cup of water, that cup of tea. I don't know. Let's see where this goes. What is the shape Aries is shifting into in the month of July? Okay. Interesting. The magician came out reverse. I'll show it to you upright. I love this card. It's my favorite card in this deck. Clearly some Jesus imagery here, but essentially we're seeing the magician surrounded by animals. You know, I gotta say, um, and you know, the, the magician has all of the tools in front, all of the tools of the tarot here, all of the elements in front of them, the sword, the pentacle, the water, the flame. But what's interesting about this card combo so far is it is invoking that 
contemplative energy that I felt with you drinking tea, both contemplative and prophetic, because these are deeply magical archetypes in the tarot. You know, the Queen of Cups is like the earthly version of the High Priestess. This is someone that is deeply tuned into their internal life, their internal emotional intuitive energy. The Queen of Cups is someone who would have a, a dream, write down that dream and recognize it as potentially a vision. And then the Magician is someone who would take that vision and work with it here on the earth plane. But again, it's sticking in my mind that the magician came out in reverse. So to me, there's something, because the magician is about taking action here in the human realm, you know, because it's about using the tools and the resources at your disposal to act on the magic, the insight that the Queen of Cups gained. So Aries, there's something here about like, you're maybe you're getting the insight about what action needs to be taken, but it's not yet time to act. Something like that. Let's see what the shift looks like and see if we can get a little more information. So what does this shift look and feel like for Aries in July? the sun, some other mystery card, and one more. Okay, we got two. Interesting, give me a second to grab the one that fell. Eight of Swords. Okay, okay. All right, Aries, what's this about? Give me a second to see what the cards are trying to say here. Interesting the way the cards are arranging themselves. Okay, I think something, some very clear truth, I will show you the cards, give me a second. I think some very clear truth is coming through to you about some sort of action that you need to take that is for your highest good, it is for the best for you, and it's like, you know, the sun shining is sort of, the sun in your in your spread here is sort of showing me a moment of illumination, like an opening for you, Aries. And it's like you're realizing that and you, and it's like a move you know you have to make, something like that. Um, but I have this feeling that like you can't really conceive of how to do that or maybe there's something about it that you don't really want to see. Or maybe you just like can't wrap your mind around it. Okay, let me show you what I'm looking at. So first of all, what I see, the cards, four cards came out to explain your shift from the Queen of Cups into the Magician energy. And, and again, magician in reverse. So perhaps that's the hesitance to act on this that I'm feeling. Um, and, the, and the four cards came out in a cross. So I'm gonna show you the horizontal part of the cross here. It's the queen of swords and the king of wands. And doesn't it look like they're having a very clear conversation here? The queen of swords is coming in with some maybe pretty intense truth. She's speaking very directly with that sword. She's pointing it very clearly. And, and again, I'm getting sort of a move you need to make, some sort of move you need to make because I'm looking at the, um, the butterfly flying. There's a move you need to make here. And again, that could be like a physical move. That could be just an action that needs taken, something like this. And the Queen of Swords is coming in with the truth like, 
you know you need to do this or maybe this is someone coming to you and saying it's time for you to do this make this move and you aries as the king of wands you know the king of wands is typically the earthly embodiment of your archetype in the tarot which is the emperor aries energy the one who steps up into leadership the one who takes charge the one who is has power and uses that power is decisive with that power and so the king of wands is incredibly decisive very much a trailblazer someone that that thinks of creative original ideas and then carries them out acts acts on them takes action towards them but look at this king of wands doesn't it look like he's a little taken aback by what the queen of swords has to say a little bit like whoa you want me to do what and now look the king of wands is looking up in the in the way the cards wanted to lay themselves the king of wands is looking up at the sun card see that see how his eyes are sort of rolled up i hope you can see these cards are shiny looking up towards this child wide open in the sun card like that's part of the sun energy i'm really drawn to not only the illumination of the sun shedding its light on something that is clearly for your happiness the sun card talks about happiness joy fulfillment okay and that's that's you aries as this child by the way on horseback right again sort of confirming this idea of maybe be you know having to make a move of some sort and the king is looking up at the sun like oh my gosh you're right that would make me happier you know that's the energy is like oh that's what would make me happy that's what would make me feel free that's the action you want me to take whoa it's sort of stunned. It's sort of a stunned energy, which is perhaps, um, perhaps part of the reason the magician is in reverse. The magician is feeling a bit hesitant to take action on this because maybe this is something that is going to ask you to use all of your resources, all of your tools at your disposal to act on this insight that you are gaining through the, the drinking the tea with the Queen of Cups. And now one more card at the bottom of this whole cross that we have in the middle. So here's the bottom part is the Eight of Swords. This is what seems to be underlying this whole thing is a bit of a feeling of entrapment, like more of a mental entrapment feeling like oh, I just can't conceive of how this is going to happen. You know, the Eight of Swords also talks about the ways we limit ourselves mentally, you know, the mental limitations that stop us from moving, the mental limitations that keep us in a sense of being stuck or being bound to something or having to stay in a certain mind frame, a certain location, a certain situation. And it's like, simply because we can't see the blindfold here, we can't see the way out. Interesting that the Eight of Swords has the hand on the heart, the King of Wands has the hand on the heart. I want you to see. See that? They're both a little bit like, this feels like too big. This feels like too much. This feels like kind of a lot. My, my brain feels overwhelmed by it. I can't believe this is the action I need to take. I don't necessarily want to do it. You know, like there's this just like, whoa, mental overload happening. And then, and then, and then. And then there's a different sort of openness gesture that's almost the same gesture between the sun card and the magician, which is, I think, both of the things. It's like the queen of swords. 
Okay, here's the, here's the story. You're drinking your tea. You're sipping your tea. Whatever has reached a boiling point for you has kind of cooled off. And you're like, okay, you're in a more contemplative space, medicinal space, maybe some self-care. And you're really listening to your insides, your emotions, you're drinking the tea, you're, you're breathing in that steam, all is well. And then out of that comes a pretty intense truth, a glaring truth a very direct truth. And it's like, oh. again, maybe someone comes to you with this truth or maybe this is something coming from inside of you and you're like, whoa, are you serious? That's what I have to do. And, and it's like, I don't see how that could happen or how I'm gonna be able to accomplish that. And then boom. Yes, but you have all the tools at your disposal to do it. And this is what's going to bring you towards happiness, illumination, a sense of freedom, a sense of joy. Because again, the child with the open chest, as opposed to the eight of swords and the king of wands who are like, whoa, you know, maybe this is something that is having a strong impact on your heart, just because I'm feeling like that when the queen of swords comes in with some truth for you, it's like, ooh, you know, maybe it's a bit of a heart blow, but it is moving you. If you are, if you are able to move through the mental limitations around this, the perception, like the limitations that you perceive in this situation and begin to open your mind to this and take action towards it, King of Wands, it's like it's leading to an openness, a sense of op more openness, more freedom because the child is like, ah, oh. and even the magician is like, ah, oh. see that? Aries, what are you doing? What are you doing? What is, what is the directive here? One more thing I want to point out that I really like. The Queen of Cups is water energy and it looks to me like the Queen of Swords has her hand, her finger dipped into the water. So it's like, here's the water of the Queen of Cups with like the tea. Where's the tea? Yeah the tea sitting in front of you. And then it's like from dipping your hand, ingesting, like connecting with that water energy, that intuitive, emotional, internal energy of insight comes whew, the sort of truth. That truth that either comes your way or comes from you is deeply connected to this water energy, this energy of intuitive insight. I think that's why it's important to take action on this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Aries, I like it. I like it so much. So we're gonna take this into an extended reading now, Aries, and see if we can start to unpack some of the insight that came through here. If you would like to follow me over to that extended reading, click the link in the description box below and you'll be directed to Patreon. Patreon is an online community that I have created for folks who've been following my work, who like the way I read cards and wanna dig deeper. That sounds like you and you want to continue this reading with me and, and see what exactly this truth is that you're being asked to take action on and what exactly this is leading to. Um, Follow me over to Patreon, read the full description when you get over there so you know how it works, and then I will send you the extended reading for July. Wowza. Okay, Aries, I'm excited to dig into this, get some, um, some clarifying cards, some oracle guidance, and see where this is leading. All right, my friend, happy July, happy final eclipse of eclipse season. Let's see where this leads. Talk to you soon. Notice how this person in the Five of Wands is looking directly up at the sun and the King of Wands is that same person. This is you looking directly up at the sun. You see what I mean? 
there is this energy of like turn your gaze towards the sun lift your your gaze your chin your eyes up and out of the narrow confined perspective of where you currently are it's like a turn your face towards the sun and receive this like enlightenment moment this aha moment this revelation this truth bomb you know this judgment awakening of like ah oh, okay you know 